Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I am going to be doing a foundation and concealer review on the new Giorgio Armani face products. So we have the Armani Power Fabric Foundation Balm and the Armani Power Fabric Concealer. So if you want to hear my thoughts, get a wear test on these two, then just keep watching. So we have the Giorgio Armani, of course, Power Fabric Foundation Balm. This retails for $64 and right now at the current moment, it looks like you can pick it up from Neiman Marcus, Bloomingdale's, Giorgio Armani, and Barney's. And then of course, we're going to be talking about the Power Fabric Concealer. You can get this at all the places I just mentioned as well as Sephora. This actually was in my Sephora store the other day. So I'm going to zoom into my face and we are going to hone in on this foundation. Okay, so we have here the Power Fabric High Coverage Foundation. Foundation Balm. This is available in 12 shades. I got mine in the shade number four. If you're curious, I do wear 4.5 in Luminous Silk. And you guys know I love Luminous Silk so, so much. So that is why I picked this guy up. I'm about to insert some swatches comparing it to other shades right now for you guys. So for foundation swatches, we have the Armani Power Fabric Balm in four. We have the Armani Luminous Silk in 4.5. Just so you can see, 4.5 in Luminous Silk is lighter than four in the Power Fabric Balm. Just something to keep in mind if you know about the Armani foundations. Then we have Too Faced Born This Way Foundation in Light Beige. We have the Tom Ford Seamless Foundation Stick in 4.5 Light Ivory. We have the Maybelline Fit Me Foundation in 125 Nude Beige. And finally, the It Cosmetic CC Cream in Medium if you want to compare. Now, I'm not a very seasoned foundation reviewer. That's not usually the type of product I review, but I'm so happy to bring this to you today. I just hope I don't forget anything. So I have a normal to dry skin type. I often prefer a more natural finished foundation with a little bit of glow because I feel like that helps to kind of hide my dry patches. So essentially, this foundation was inspired from the Power Fabric foundation from Armani, which I do like. I much prefer the Luminous silk. The power fabric is basically more matte, so it's more appropriate for long wear events for my personal skin type. But like I said, I prefer luminous silk, but power fabric is still pretty so, good. This is described as the power fabric foundation now in a new transformative texture and on the go format. Delivers all day matte coverage in a revolutionary balm to powder technology. So it's supposed to transform from balm to cream to powder during application and finishes as a powder for flawless, non-greasy look. It claims to be full matte coverage, the balm to powder texture, long wear, compact, natural, blah, blah, blah. Just so you know, I have worn this foundation before because I'm very indecisive when it comes to foundations. So I did wanna get some wear in before I did this video just to see what ways work best for me. And plus, first impressions for foundations are a little sketch for me because I just feel like my skin is so different every day. Some days it's really dry. Some days I get oily. It's so strange. So I will tell you now, if you have dry skin, you're going to hate this product. Yesterday, uh, my skin was, wasn't was even dry, but when I put this on, it definitely emphasized my dry patches. In preparation to not have a repeat of yesterday, I exfoliated, I moisturized, I have let my primer oil sit on my skin for a while and I just sprayed with a facial spray. So hopefully I don't have a repeat of yesterday. So when you open it, it basically has the same packaging of a cushion foundation, but it's not. It literally is a balm consistency. I tried it with a brush for application. That was a no-go for me. So I am going to use my sponge. I just dip it in there and pat it around. Now, like I said, I normally wear a 4.5 in the Luminous Silk. I got this in a four. And as you can see, it's ever so slightly too dark on me. I can totally deal with it. This will be the perfect shade for me in the summer. Definitely runs dark compared to their other shades. What I found with this product is less is more. If you keep building and building, that is when I feel like it looks really cakey and really looks like it is sitting on my skin. So I try not to layer it on too much. So just FYI, it claims to be full coverage. I don't think it's very full coverage. I can still see discoloration on my skin. I mean, it's definitely a medium coverage and it's not bad. 
coverage wise I like a medium coverage so just so you know the balm to cream to powder consistency totally true this definitely finishes as a powder which I really do like I love powder foundation but powder foundation comes at a cost for me because it looks a little cakey so I'm gonna zoom you in and tell you my thoughts I was hoping for a better experience than yesterday because I'm gonna be honest I didn't really like this foundation yesterday. So I feel like it looks really cakey around my mouth. It looks like it's just sitting on top of my skin. It's kind of emphasizing, I don't know, are these wrinkles? My smile wrinkles? It looks pretty good on my forehead, honestly. I'm just gonna let you take a look real fast. So I mean, basically what I'm trying to tell you, based on the days that I've worn this, I don't really like how it looks on my skin. It sits on top of my skin. It looks cakey on my skin. One thing I will say though, I don't even feel it on my skin. It is very, very lightweight, which I think a lot of you guys will love. I'm thinking if you have dry skin, you're not going to like this, but I can see somebody with oily skin really liking this. Okay, anyways, we're going to move on to the concealer over here. The concealer here is $34. It comes in 20 shades. I got mine in the shade number four also. I'm just gonna put a little bit under my eyes. I haven't been too into applying a really heavy layer of concealer just because I feel like that causes it to cake. Now this concealer, based on my previous experiences, with it oh my gosh it is so lightweight blends super easy i would say it has a more medium coverage oh by the way i forgot to read this to you guys this concealer delivers high coverage payoff to hide imperfections throughout the day non-creasing stretchable concealer formulated with time releasing oils to seamlessly glide along the skin for an easy blending and a long wear result i'll tell you right now definitely very easy blending not the most full coverage concealer that i've ever used but a very lightweight medium coverage in the best way possible i don't know it did its job and it did it well for the wear test today i am going to put a little bit of my hourglass veil powder under this eye just to see if the concealer holds up better with or without powder the past couple times i use this i used it without a powder and i actually really liked it so those of you who don't like to set your under eyes you don't need to with this concealer but but i do want to compare it between powder and no powder. And then I'm also just gonna kind of press into the lines of this side of my face. So this is my powdered face. And this is my non-powdered face. So I am going to finish the rest of my makeup and I will be right back. Okay, so it is currently 117. So I'm gonna say I had my foundation on at about one for the check-ins, but now I have everything on and in place on my face. I will say I did spray my face with a little bit of Fix Plus and with everything else on top of my skin, it definitely looks a lot better. The finish of this I would describe as a natural matte. It is not the most matte matte I've ever seen in my life. It does have a little bit more to it, so it's definitely a natural matte. My under eyes are looking pretty nice and pretty smooth. Uh, it also stated that the concealer could work as an eyeshadow base, so I did put that all over my eyes before my eyeshadow, so we'll see how my eyeshadow wears. As of now, I can't lie, I'm really not feeling this foundation. I just think I have other foundations that look better than this. From afar, the foundation looks really good on my skin, but close up, it just looks like it's sitting on top and is a little cakey. I will check in to let you know how everything's going in a few hours. Hello. Okay, so it is about 4 o'clock, 3.55 if you want to be exact. So we are at the three hour checkpoint. What I noticed is that my smile lines are ever so slightly just starting to show and it's starting to separate a little bit on my chin. Other than that, everything looks better. It doesn't look quite so cakey anymore. I think the oils of my skin just needed to sink into the powder to make it look more skin-like. It has a little bit more of a luminosity to it. So with my natural oils added, it definitely looks a lot better. Still not loving it, but I don't dislike it quite as strongly anymore. I will say yesterday when I did wear this and I didn't properly prepare my face, it was a mess in this area. Separated, disgusting looking. So today it's definitely holding on a lot, 
a lot, a lot better. So far in the three hour checkpoint, it looks pretty good. Generally speaking, my skin doesn't have trouble with wear time. Um, it's just more so about separation, seeping into things I don't want it to seep into. And it's starting, I can tell, but I will check in with you guys and we'll see how strongly this holds. Also, almost forgot to mention, I noticed significantly less creasing on this eye, which was the eye that I did powder. So there's more creasing on the eye that I didn't powder, but it really isn't that bad. But powdering still does a trick. So here's a closer look. So this is the not powdered eye. This is the powdered eye and ignore my terrible lined lips. But so you can get a closer look at my skin. Gosh, natural lighting is so beautiful. All right, so it is time for our six hour check-in. So it is about seven o'clock. So I just got back from eating wings. So basically that's a big mess and I like rubbed all of this off, but this was the ugly part of the makeup. So I'm not even mad at it. <laughs> Other than that though, I can't lie, my skin looks really, really good. I almost wish I would have filmed yesterday because I hated this foundation yesterday, but right now it's looking very good. I'm not oily or anything, and the oils have seemed to really sink into the powder to make it not look so crusty on my face, and my blush is still on and popping. So, so far, six hours in, it's pretty pretty good it is seeping into my smile lines which i don't like but just ever so slightly uh not the best but not the worst and yeah so that's kind of my little update like i said i don't have a real problem with longevity of makeup so if it does make me look oily then it's a terrible foundation but right now it's looking very good and i don't see too much breaking up either so I will check in with you guys in two hours for the eight o'clock check-in. Oh, also, for some reason, I always forget to talk about the concealer. But yeah, the concealer is looking really good. Even the side that I didn't set, it's looking pretty decent. Definitely, the side I set is looking way better. The creasing is way less obvious. So I would say set this with a powder. But if you don't like to set your under eyes with powder, it is a good way to go. Okay, so it is now 9 o'clock, meaning I have officially worn this foundation and concealer for 8 hours. So here I am for the final check-in. I got some opinions about this foundation, but right now, the current state, um, it's worn down, especially a lot around my mouth. And my forehead looks really smooth. I've liked how it's looked on my forehead all day today. For the most part, when this foundation wears down, it'll look a little cakey, but not too bad. Only really up close because it is powder. So you guys know when you have just powder on your face and it kind of wears throughout the day. So you can see the powder residue, but it's not really that unflattering. It just looks like your powder wore off. That's kind of what it looks like on my face right now. Um, what is really good is my cheek colors definitely stayed intact throughout the day. So overall, my opinions on this foundation. If you have dry skin, run far, far away. When I used this the previous days, I didn't prep my skin properly or for this foundation, I would say. It was showing dry patches that I didn't even know were there. It was creasing all over my face. I did not like it at all. I was ready to completely bag this foundation. So today I took special measures. I exfoliated, I put on a face mask, I used spray, I moisturized, I let an oil sit on my face for 20 minutes. I did all of that just to get this foundation to work. So my overall consensus of this foundation is if you have oily skin, I really do think you're going to like it because I like the way that the oils melted in with the powder. I thought it was very, very pretty. If you have any sort of dry skin, normal to dry skin, don't even waste your time. Um, I mean, today with the proper preparation, I do actually quite like it. I like the way it feels on my skin. It's really, really light and that's really important, I think. So I don't even feel it on the skin. So I think for every day, this is a great foundation. But for $64, it's not worth it. $64 is a big price to pay 
uh, when I have $10 foundations that I know I like better, that work better, that wear better, that I don't need to go through all of these measures to get it to work for me. So it's just not for my skin type. I think if you have oily skin, you may like it more. But overall, in my opinion, it's just not worth the money. Now let's talk about the concealer. The concealer... I like it. She blends super easily. She's just as lightweight as the foundation. She's very natural under the eyes, very smooth. I will say just adding that little bit of powder did make it last a little bit longer, a little bit more crease-free under the eyes. I mean, now the powdered eye, eight hours later, is starting to catch up, but that's completely okay. This concealer doesn't need to be powdered, but I would definitely recommend it for more long wear situations. But as an eyeshadow based, Oh my gosh, my eyeshadow I don't think has faded and I don't see any creasing. Now I will say I did use the liquid shadow and the liquid shadow I use never creases on me so that might be part of it but wow. I'm pretty impressed though because my eyeshadow looks pretty dang fresh eight hours later. Yeah, so I'm definitely feeling the concealer. The foundation just isn't for me. I just think for $64 it should work a little better. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed my review on these two Giorgio Armani products. I had a really fun filming my first foundation wear test video. Let me know how you liked it and how I could improve it. What other things you would like to see in these videos or to have me include because I just want to be as helpful to you as possible. Anyways, remember to subscribe to my channel, like this video, comment down below any questions, comments, concerns, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys, have a great day.